it's a, it's a pressure that is on our head for, for the better of 50 years. Uh, and we realized lately that we are the last generation. And if we keep quiet, nobody will know. The real story started March 19, 1944, when the uh, German army occupied uh, Hungary. We didn't know exactly what to expect. We knew that this is bad news, needless to say. But within, by the, uh, within three weeks, the order came out that we have to wear a yellow star. Unfortunately, the Hungarian population was, was very much anti-Semitic. And a few weeks later, the order came out that we can only go out four hours a day so that uh, we don't uh, infect the rest of the population with our presence, you see. Then the order came in that we have to move to so-called Jewish houses. My grandparents had a three-room apartment and there were about 20 people living there. But we were not dissatisfied because every day we were afraid that uh, for our lives. You have to understand that after the, the German occupation, the, the United States Air Force started bombing the city. So every day around 10 o'clock, between 10 and 10.30, we had an Allied air raid. And the Air Force with their flying fortresses came over Budapest and were bombing the city. There were big oil refineries and heavy industry uh, at, at the city, uh, outside the outskirts of the city. And in some days they were carpet bombing the city. And uh, so we were not sure who were we more afraid of. Were we more afraid of dying from a bomb or, 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 or the Germans? Anybody who they caught first, just on the streets, they were taking them to the Danube and they were shooting them into the Danube. Or they were killing them in streets or killing them in, there were massacres, the pogroms, you can call it pogroms or massacres all over the city. Uh, over a period of, of 60 days, they killed about 20,000 people. And the favorite uh, method of execution was to tie three people together, you see, and then just shoot the one in the middle so that the, the one in the middle would drag down the other two into the Danube, which of course was freezing cold. You have to understand that we're talking about December, January. And of course they would drown. Now Wallenberg and his people were three bridges down, down river with little boats trying to fish out whoever they could. It was guarded, but I escaped from there. And I went to the school of the Scots, where my father's battalion was housed at the time. I showed up at the, at the battalion there, and, and they said, oh my God, how did you get here? What? So they, they, they took me up to the attic of the school. And when my mother escaped, she found out that I'm, I'm gone from the apartment. She showed up at the same school, and she was hiding with me up in the attic of the school. The end of November, the battalion was taken and they were put on a barge on the Danube and shipped to Austria, to Mauthausen in Austria, which was another concentration camp. Then we were left in this, uh, we were left in this attic. Now we had no food because while the battalion was there, they smuggled up food. We had no food. Now what do we do? We said the only thing we can do is go to the ghetto. We have nobody to, to help us at this point. I said, but if, how can we go, how do we get to the ghetto? I mean, it's, it's, uh, we, we, we can't, why well, at that point, uh, you walk with your yellow star, they shoot you down on the street. So I said, the only thing is we have to risk and walk without the yellow star. So we had to take off the yellow star. And I said, we have to walk. And I remember to this day, as, 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 as it would be today, we had to pass by the Gestapo headquarters. I was telling my mother jokes. I said, please, for heaven's sakes, laugh. For please laugh, please smile, because we are without a star and they would just drag us in and that would be the end of us. You can't call it courage because that's, that's not courage. It was it's bordered on the stupidity, of course, or, 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 
desperation maybe is the is is is, is, a, is a survival and we just had to get into to the ghetto we thought that that's our uh, that's where we will be safe in the ghetto can you imagine that the ghetto is your savior so we did get into the ghetto and we lived under underground we lived of course in in in, in a in a basement hoping to you know maybe to survive maybe we don't and uh, i remember i was sitting on a on a on a bench for for the better of four weeks uh, against the cement wall and that that's where i slept that's where i sat all day we had uh, we had one bed there i remember i had my grandparents there and two old ladies and the four of them we put them to sleep they they were sleeping on the bed two this way and two this way and we my mother and me we were sitting there on this on this bench and uh, we didn't know what what is going to happen to us uh, practically no food there my my uh, grandmother found a little bag of of uh, split peas dried split peas and that's what we ate for for about 4 weeks that was the only food we had The Adolf Eichmann is leaving Budapest just before the encirclement of the city, which, which happened in, in December. And he leaves word with the German commander that bef before you retreat from the Pest side where the ghetto was, you have to liquidate the ghetto. Now, you have to understand, liquidating ghetto means one thing only. You have to massacre everybody in there. And Schmidt, who were by that time, uh, was already uh, no. He knew already that the, that this this war is coming to an end, and he he was already concerned about what will be at the end of the war. So maybe this was the 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 last warning to him uh, to behave like a human being, and he stopped it. With this one move, seventy thousand of us were saved. 